Hi, today Mrs. Lubuzzi's math blog is going to be a little combination of lesson 6, lesson 7, and lesson 8. We're going to start by going over the homework from lesson 6. Lesson 6 was the exact same as lesson 5. We spent all day Monday going over the homework from lesson 5 so that you would know how to do the homework for lesson 6. You needed to have all five steps written out, just like the example on the board. Please make sure you study and understand the five steps. This should be written out. The five steps should be clearly labeled and written out on your homework, exactly like in your class notes. Remember, you should not be taking the problem set out of your math finder and bringing it home. You should be bringing home your whole math finder every night so that you have your notes to use as a reference. So, step one. Step one was written right on your homework. It told you it was partitive division. And I wrote that on the board. So step one, you just had a copy out of your binder. Step two, draw a model. So 45 divided by 3 fifths. If you went back to your exit ticket for lesson two, your lesson two exit ticket shows you exactly how to solve this. And we spent all day Monday, we have spent the first half of Monday going over an exit ticket for lesson two. So all day Monday, we spent prepping for this homework. The first half, we went over how to solve this type of division with our exit ticket. The second half, we went over the homework so you knew how to do the five steps. So I'm concerned those of you who said we didn't learn the lesson because we did. So draw a model. We know that this sentence is the same thing as saying three-fifths. of what number is 45. So we know that 3 fifths is 45. We know that when we have a whole number and we're dividing by a fraction, our number is going to be bigger. If I have a whole Kit Kat and I divide it in two, now I have two pieces. I went from one to two. So dividing by a fraction gives you a bigger number. So if 3 fifths is 45, so first I show my 3 fifths. 1, 2, 3 of 3 fifths. So it is 45. So I know that these three boxes equal 45. So if those three boxes equal 45, what does each one box equal? 15. So if 15 is my constant, all of the boxes equal 15. So now what's the total? If each constant is 15, what's the value of the total of all five fifths? 75. So that's step three. Find your answer. You should be writing this down. Now you can choose any unit you want. That's the beauty of step four. You can't get step four wrong. You can pick any unit you want to use. So for this example, I chose dollars. So for example, three fifths is how much money she had left. When she was done shopping, oh, I'm sorry, three fifths is what she spent. I apologize. So she spent three fifths of her money. How much money did she have when she started shopping? Well, if three-fifths is what she spent, and $45 was the cost of the earring. So, Samantha Maria spent three-fifths, or $45, on a pair of earrings. So, how much money did she have before she spent any? Notice there's no answer in the situation. We already figured that out. So you have to have your sentences with the two pieces of information from the division where they're trying to find the answer. Okay? So number two is the same thing. You should have your five steps written out. It told you right here that it was partitive division. It said it right on the homework. 
you know from class on Monday that you need to write out your five steps. Okay, so step one was a given. Step two, draw a model. 100 divided by 2 fifths. Here's my 100. My 100 is being divided into 2 of the fifths. Do you see that? 100 divided by 2 fifths. Here's 2 fifths. My picture shows 2 fifths, yes? My picture shows two fifths. I'm going to take that two fifths. One hundred is going to get divided by that. So what's one hundred broken into those two pieces? Fifty each. But that's not one hundred divided by two. That's one hundred divided by two fifths, which means we have more boxes to go. So what's my constant? I just sounded like I was from Boston. My constant. Yes, 50. Sound like Mrs. Damaris. I have Boston accent. Constant. So my total, not two fifths, five fifths would be 250. I'm going to make a word problem now. This is all from lesson two. All of that was from Lesson 2. We learned how to divide fractions back in Lesson 2. So if this part confused you, if you did not know how to solve that division, you need to go back and review Lesson 2. Unit, I'll use students. So there's 100 girls in the collegial marching band, which is only two-fifths of the whole band. So how many members are there all together in the band? Okay, so I took my whole number and divided it by the fraction of a number. Alright, so if you did not know how to solve these two division problems, go back and review lesson two. Alright, now we're going to do lesson seven and lesson eight. They're the same thing, so two and one special, two for one. Okay? Piece of cake. It's worked out very nicely. So, let's take a look at Lesson 7. Turn to Lesson 7. Come on, where's my mouse? So, Lesson 7. Dividing fractions by fractions. Today, we're going to cross that bridge from visual fraction models to the equation. The model showed us what it means. We saw relationships. What's one relationship? We actually figured out back in our ratios unit. What did we notice? That if we divided by 4, that it was the same thing as what? Dividing by 4 is the same thing as what? Multiplying by 1 4. We noticed that way last week, even back in ratios. So dividing by one fourth would be the same as multiplying by four. four. Fabulous. Very good. That actually has a name. You figured it out way before I was even going to teach it to you. You saw these patterns. So on your loosely paper, you can copy these notes down. If you want to label it lesson seven notes, That's called either a reciprocal or inverse. So the reciprocal or inverse of a fraction is the fraction made by interchanging the numerator and denominator. That's fancy talk for flipping it. So for example, the inverse of 2 thirds is 3 halves. The inverse of 5 eighths is 8 fifths. The inverse of 4 is 1 4. Okay, so when you're multiplying by the inverse, as opposed to dividing by the original number, 
it gives you the same value because those are called multiplicative inverse. So you're multiplying by the inverse. So for example, 3 fourths times 4 thirds equals 1. And I'll show you how that works. You know that you can multiply your numerators and that equals 12. Multiply your denominators, that equals 12. 12 out of 12 equals 1 whole. So because it gives you 1, that's your multiplicative inverse, that's why multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing by the original number. Okay, and they give you a formula here to look at it. Um, I'm going to move on. If you didn't finish copying the notes, we'll come back to it at the end of class. So let's just take a look at one more example. 3 fourths divided by 2 fifths. This is a review of what we did last week. Well, I know I have right, 2 fifths. This is what I am dividing. So I'm dividing 2 fifths. So I'm going to draw my 2 fifths and shade in my 2 fifths. Okay? Now that 2 fifths. I'm going to divide into 3 fourths. So my 2 fifths, which is right here, 3 fourths. Is it easy to take 3 fourths and snap it into two boxes? No. 3 fourths doesn't work nicely. It's like that Kit Kat bar again. Remember, imagine we have three-fourths of that Kit Kat bar. It's hard to split that middle one in half. Is there another number that's equal to three-fourths that would be easier to split in half? Well, that's not equal to it. An equivalent fraction. What about, yes, six-eighths. So what's half of 6 eighths? No, not, no, 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths. That's not half. If I had 6 out of 8 slices of a pizza and I eat half of them, I ate 3 out of 8 slices. Remember, our denominator stays the same here. If I have six eighths of the pizza and we share it, you have three eighths and I have three eighths. Now I know what my constant is. So my constant is three eighths. Please stop clicking the pen and copy your notes. So I took my three fourths, I divide, I'm, I'm sorry, I took my two fifths and I divided it by three fourths. So now how many do I have all together? What's my total? How many eighths do I have now in this picture? I have five sets of three eighths. I have 15 eighths. But I don't want to leave that as an improper fraction. So as a mixed number, eight divided by is one, and my remainder is seven, and my denominator stays the same. Notice how nicely I circle my answer so it's easy for the old lady teacher to find it on my paper. Where did you get three? Because I knew that this yellow area was three fourths. So my yellow area is three fourths. So I have to take my three fourths and split it into two boxes. But three fourths isn't easy to split into two boxes. So I just found an equivalent fraction, which was 6 eighths. Do we see how 3 fourths equals 6 eighths? It's the same thing. Isn't it easier to split, split 6 eighths? It's easier to split 6 eighths. So 6 eighths divided by these two yellow boxes is 3 eighths. If you use that paper that I gave you to take home with all the fraction bars, those fraction bars will help you find equivalent fractions that are easier to split up. So you should cut those out and put them in a baggie at home. Because 8 goes into 15 once with 7 left over. Okay? Now, let's see if this inverse thing that we were talking about works. 
So we had three fourths divided by two fifths. We said that dividing by this is the same thing as multiplying by the inverse. So instead of dividing three fourths by two fifths, we're going to multiply three fourths by five over two. Let me write this a little bit neater. Notice how the first fraction stays the same, because that's my known. So let's see if we get the same answer. Instead of dividing, are you copying this down, please? Be with us. So multiply my numerators. Three times five is? Four times two is? Hey, same thing! Eight goes into 15 once with seven left over and my denominator stays the same. So we were able to prove our theory that multiplying by the inverse is the same thing as dividing. Because three-fourths is my known. And that's what I have. I don't want the inverse of both. Do not take the inverse of both. Okay, because we're just dividing or multiplying. Okay? That's not going to work. We don't want to do that. Because that's not the theory that we were just working with. It's always the second one. But now, turn to lesson eight. Let's apply the same theory to lesson eight. Except this time, we're working with mixed numbers. And what a quinky thing that that was our new now. So let's read the problem. Carly has four and a half walls left to paint in order for all the bedrooms in her house to have the same color paint. However, she has used almost all of her paint and has only five sixths of a gallon left. I'm up here, ladies. How much paint can she use on each wall in order to have enough paint for the remaining wall. So what does she have? What does she have? She has, she has five six. And what does she have to do with that five six? She has to divide that amount of paint by four and a half walls. So write this down please. She has to take what she has, five six, and divide it among the remaining walls. What should I do to that mixed number? Right. So first thing I'm going to do is make it an improper fraction. So what is that as an improper fraction? What is it? What is it? Everybody should have their hands up. We did it as we do now. It's fifth grade, fourth grade work, third grade work. What is it? Nine halves. So now what's my step two? Instead of dividing by nine halves, I am going to multiply by the inverse. So I should have made this blue. So step two is blue. So Take your original number and multiply it by the inverse. Okay? So that's step two. So let's multiply our numerators. Five times two is ten. Six times nine is fifty-four. On your homework, I should see these three steps top to bottom written out. So now 10 over 54, those are both even numbers. So I can reduce by 2 and get 5 over 27, and I circle my final answer. Right now, try B on your own. Try B on your own. Step 1, step 2, step 3, reduce if possible. So step 1. Let's take our improper fraction and make it a mixed number. So what is 3 and 4 sevenths as an improper fraction? 7 times 3 is 21 
plus 4 is 28, and my denominator stays the same. Now, I'm going to multiply by my, did I do that wrong? Oh, 25, I apologize. I'm rushing, I'm saying beat the clock. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. So now, 2 fifths times 7 over 25. So multiply your numerators. 2 times 7 is? 5 times 25 is? Can that be reduced? Nope. So that's your answer. Remember to multiply fractions. You multiply your numerators, then you multiply your denominators. That's what I want your homework to look like. Have a good night. Don't forget to make your study guides.